Yes, please, Poland. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is um, an extremely sensitive issue for us. My expert will present the report uh, to this committee in the next uh, meeting. And uh, I just want to be sure that he can speak in Polish and also that he can listen to the interpretation into Polish. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate the problem, but it's already quite difficult to organize a meeting with interpretation at such short notice. Organizing a meeting like the one we've just seen is a daily task for uh, the programming unit of the European Commission Interpretation Service. In fact, not just organizing one meeting, but organizing up to 50 meetings like that every day, which means that during the busy periods of the year, we're working with up to a thousand individual interpreters, working with 23 official EU languages. In addition to that, we also provide interpretation from non-EU languages, Russian, Japanese, Chinese and others. My name's David Baker. I'm the head of the programming unit. I'm going to be your guide. Let's go and meet some of the other people and see how it works. There are 30 of us in this unit working on different aspects of organizing meetings. Those are meetings in a number of different European institutions, but principally the Council of Ministers and the European Commission itself. The first point of contact that meeting organizers have with our service is with a unit which we call the DOOR. That's actually the acronym in French for request to organize a meeting. The meeting organizers have to submit their request uh, via a web-based application six weeks in advance. Unfortunately, it happens a lot that we have to refuse meeting requests because we have a structural lack of meeting rooms. This is the first step. On Friday evening, I print out the planche where I have got all the meeting rooms and interpretation schemes requested and I will present them on Monday morning in our arbitrage meeting. Every Monday morning in this office we have a meeting which we call the arbitrage. Members of the programming unit come together to examine all of the requests for meeting rooms and interpretation which we have in six weeks time. Okay. So Monday we have no problem. No. Uh, Tuesday we have three meetings, too many for the rooms. Yes. Do you have some low-priority meetings that we have to yes. cancel? I got a third priority of DG um, RTD uh, without interpretation. The organizers give us an indication of the relative priority of each meeting, which guides us in our decisions. In this way, we have an overview of all of the requests and the priorities for that week, which we can compare with the available resources. Basically, do we have enough rooms? Do we have enough interpreters? And if we don't have enough interpreters, are we able to recruit more? Pila, what's the situation for interpretation for that day? Well, I'm afraid it's, uh, we're a bit uh, in dire straits, David, and I think we have to put some meetings another day, because otherwise we don't have enough interpreters. And this concerns especially the English booth. OK, so noted, we'll look at the whole week and come back to that day at the end. Once the decisions have been taken at the arbitrage about which meetings are priorities and therefore go ahead, which ones might have to be moved to another day, and which ones we can't accept. That information is encoded in our IT systems by the head of the door. When I make all the changes decided at the reunion of arbitrage, I give the feuille. On appelle ça ici le planche à la programmation qui attribue les interprètes aux réunions. The next stage in the process is the responsibility of the head of programming. She looks at all of the meetings and looks at the individual languages which have been requested for each meeting and she compares that to the available interpreters. She will have to reduce some language regimes uh, because we don't have all of the languages, all of the interpreters necessary. Let's see how Chris does that. After the arbitrage, so after we have decided which meetings can go through, we put the interpreters in the teams. What we look at, of course, is first of all the languages that we need for the meeting, so the languages that will be spoken and the languages that will uh, be listened to, and then we assign the interpreters according to the languages they know. Sometimes, because a lot of things happen between the arbitrage and between the time that we start programming, sometimes we still do have to cancel boots. A meeting with 22 languages. So it means that 22 languages can be spoken and listened to. Uh, it's a whole lot of booths actually uh, that we have to assign people to. Uh, we can start, for instance, with the Portuguese booth. If I assign this interpreter, 
I see immediately already, according to the languages that she knows, that I have already five languages covered in the Portuguese book. I want to add some other language, Greek for instance. And uh, okay, so now we have already two interpreters and we have already, uh, if I count well, six languages covered. What we see here now is that already quite a lot of languages are covered out of the 22 languages, but not all of them, of course. So Latvian, for instance, we can take as an example. Nobody of the interpreters of the other books actually understands Latvian. So that means that it can only be two Latvian interpreters, at least two, who will interpret the Latvian into, in this case, English. And all the other boots will actually take English as a bridge language and will then, with a little delay, interpret the Latvian via the English into their own language. The big 22-22 meeting, it looked really easy because that was only the start, so all the interpreters were still available. I could uh, give a very rich language combination, which was uh, very nice and very easy thing, thing to do. But of course, if you have 30, 40 meetings in one day, it becomes more complicated the more meetings you fill up. Or you have made up a team and then suddenly the meeting organizers, they uh, add a language that you have not foreseen in the meeting. So you have to start taking people out, going to look for them in other meetings. Sometimes suddenly they want to have two days for a meeting instead of one day. So of course you have to keep the same team but those people are on the second day already in another meeting. So then you go and take them out of their other meeting as well. So as you can see, there's a lot of constraints and uh, it's not always as easy as it might look. There are constant changes to the needs of the meeting organisers and also the availability of interpreters. So the programmers are constantly updating their work. Normally Chris works with four other people in assigning interpreters to meetings and it takes three weeks to prepare one week of meetings. Could you please get onto DG Interpretation, um, the web door thing, and ask them please if they could give us a meeting uh, in the next two weeks? We can also accept meetings which are requested after the normal six-week deadline, provided we have rooms and interpreters available. And also we need to have interpretation to and from Polish. Three Polish interpreter. If I don't have enough people, we might have to recruit. Special language requests are also part of the daily work. To meet them, we work with a mixture of staff interpreters and freelance interpreters who've passed an accreditation test. For those freelancers, we do a lot of the recruitment well in advance on long-term contracts, but we continue recruiting as our needs become clearer. We have to get enough people, the right people, but at the same time, uh, we have to be careful not to over-recruit. Let's go and meet Pilar. She's responsible for managing the freelance recruitment she has to make sure that we've got the right people in the right place on the right day and also respect the budget. We are a team of only five people, but thanks to an IT application, we are able to manage about 60,000 contracts a day a year. The freelance interpreters also use this very same application in order to communicate their availability and to accept or refuse uh, contracts. Our recruitment pattern is based on three main criteria, which are languages, quality and domicile. Why is domicile so important? Because if an interpreter is based in Brussels, no accommodation or travel costs are involved. Programming assign interpreters to meetings in advance. When their job is done, responsibility passes to the planning team. They're responsible for making all of the day-to-day -day changes, and there are a lot of those. Planning have to keep ahead of the game, that's why they have to be the early birds. Oui, bonjour, c'est Berthe ici. Écoute, je dois te changer de réunion parce que j'ai trois frères qui sont malades. Merci, hein. bonne journée. Hein. Was macht Planning? Planning kümmert sich darum, dass die Sitzungen jeden Tag gut laufen. Yes, good morning, it's Berthe, Planning Office. Nur, wir reden ja hier über Kollegen, also Menschen. Und Kollegen können krank werden oder es kommt irgendwas dazwischen. Also können sie nicht vor Ort sein. In dem Moment, wo wir dann informiert werden, 
müssen wir eine Lösung finden. Le pire qui peut nous arriver, ce sont donc des équipes qu'on perd complètement. Par exemple, une équipe ministérielle qui était prévue pour travailler jusqu'à 9h le soir. Tout d'un coup, la réunion va jusqu'à 3-4 heures tôt le matin. Il va de soi que ce genre-là, naturellement, ne travaille pas le lendemain matin. Toutes ces équipes, c'est-à-dire une réunion ministérielle, ça fait 66 interprètes, ce sont 66 interprètes qui sont perdus pour le programme ce matin-là, ce jour-là. What we've seen is a full programming cycle, a cycle which is constantly continuing. It requires good organisation, communication and teamwork between all of the people involved. Our aim is to work behind the scenes to make sure that interpretation and meetings run smoothly. Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Brussels. Uh, good morning also to the interpreters. I have some good news for our Polish colleagues. Today they can listen to and speak Polish. They have interpretation to and from Polish. So I hope that that will make things easier. Looks like we've got some satisfied customers there, but let's see how things are going in planning. Quoi? Conférence de presse. Quand? À trois heures. Qui? Le commissaire polonais. Pff, mais écoute, on va une fois regarder. Hein? Uh, uh, problem is we don't have polls. Planning. Uh, Bonjour. Hi, Bert. This is Alfonso Serna, head of the interpreters team. It's just to say that the meeting is over. It all went so well that they voted and they could end the meeting in the morning. You can tell already the Polish colleagues now. For the quite simple reason, have a press conference of the Polish commissioner at 3 o'clock. Okay, you want me to tell the Polish colleagues that they are working this afternoon at 3 o'clock in the press conference in the press room. All right, sure. You're welcome. Bye bye. So you heard. Yeah, Charlotte, we have the polls, huh? Haha, <laughs> as usual, case solved, case closed.